My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of AF and in particular I wanted to talk about some very interesting new research um, about AF and why it may develop, uh, particularly in men who are getting older. So here are a few things I wanted to talk about first. The first thing to say is that we know that AF is more common in men um, than in women. We also know that the prevalence of AF or the incidence of AF is much greater as people get older and particularly in older men um, and we also know that in an ideal world the way to the best way to deal with AF is actually not to have it in the first place. Um, now until very recently we've just said well AF tends to occur largely because of the aging process because of the wear and tear that the body goes through and um, that is then reflected in the heart getting um, uh, more uh, having to do more work and getting more stressed and that causes the atria to dilate and that could cause the de that causes the development of atrial fibrillation. What we also now know is that as we get older, as men get older, their testosterone levels tend to drop. And it is very interesting because in other studies there have been some suggestion that actually in those people who have lower testosterone levels, if you can correct the testosterone levels, then there is a lower risk of things like heart attacks and strokes as time progresses. So the question then arose as to whether is AF because of aging just because of the aging process or could there be um, a link with diminishing testosterone levels as we get older. It is now in some papers it is said that up to a third of people, a third of men above the age of 45 have testosterone levels which are below the reference range for normal. So the question really is, is it all about age or could testosterone have a role to play? And the question is, why should testosterone have a role to play? And the answer is this, that we know that AF is an inflammatory condition. Um, in patients who have AF, their inflammatory markers tend to be elevated. And there are some studies which have suggested that when you give people testosterone, particularly those who are deficient in testosterone, then the inflammation, inflammatory levels tend to get better. So in particular, things like CRP, interleukin levels, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha levels tend to fall with testosterone. So testosterone may have an anti-inflammatory effect. And so there was a very interesting study that I wanted to share with you, which was published um, in the American Journal of American Heart Association, uh, 2017 in May. The lead author is Rishi Sharma. And what these guys did was they took a bunch of patients um, who were obviously all men um, <clears throat> and who had been found to be deficient in testosterone several years ago. And they divided them into three groups. Okay, None of these patients at that at, when they were first picked up uh, had AF. Uh, but what these guys did was they then studied these patients over 4.5 to 6 years. And they broke them down into three groups. Uh, the first group was were, consisted of people who were deficient in testosterone, in whom the testosterone levels were normalized by giving them testosterone replacement. Uh, the second group was those people who were deficient in testosterone, were receiving some testosterone, but the testosterone levels had not been normalized. And the third group was a group of patients who had low testosterone levels, but had no replacement. And what they did was they wanted to study how many of these patients in each group had developed AF during the follow-up period. And what they found was very interesting in that those people who had low testosterone levels and the testosterone levels were normalized had much less AF, developed much less AF with time compared to those people who had lower testosterone levels which had either been inadequately replaced or not replaced at all. So this is interesting because, again, it points towards an, another mechanism by which possibly AF could develop. And it's particularly interesting because if this these findings are confirmed in bigger studies, then there may be a room for, there may be scope then 
for looking aggressively at patients above the age of 45 and checking their testosterone levels and ensuring that their testosterone levels are corrected. So basically the point of doing this is the point of doing this video is that at this point in time you cannot recommend anything because the studies are very small this is very very new uh, information that is coming out but if you are above the age of 45 then there is actually no harm in going and having your testosterone levels checked through a blood test because it'll give you a clue and if indeed your testosterone levels are low then regardless of whether it's for the air or whatever it's probably a good idea to get that replaced because it may benefit you in lots of different ways uh, certainly we know that lower testosterone levels cause sleep disturbance and that means that if you can correct the testosterone maybe sleep improves energy levels improve etc so um, I think the, the my, my point is that watch this space it's certainly very exciting um, and in the interim whilst we're waiting for the data to accrue whilst we're waiting for bigger studies it may be worth just becoming conscious of your testosterone levels if you're a man above the age of 45 um, I'm always so incredibly grateful um, to all of you for the love you give me for the wonderful comments uh, I am desperate to try and get this channel moving. I'm desperate that it becomes better known in developing countries where people may not have access to good health care. Uh, so one thing I'd be really grateful for that you could potentially do for me is to consider sharing the sharing the link or sharing the videos because uh, that will just increase footfall to my channel and that would just make me feel so good. Um, you know, please consider commenting, liking, uh, subscribing, and that also is just wonderful for me. Um, if you get a chance, please come and visit my website, www.yourcardiology.co.uk, and also my Facebook page, Your Cardiology One. I'm also on Twitter as Your Cardiology, uh, and if you need to ask me any questions, you can do so through my website. Thank you so much. All the best.